Okay, let us go ahead and get ourselves going again. We're going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to talk about really how do you design <coughs> buildings really from the outside in as opposed to sort of drawing them one wall, one door, one room at a time. And we're going to be playing around with really something called conceptual modeling. And this is sort of a very kind of early stage activity that most projects go through. Often we have a site, we have sort of an overall location and amount of space we have to work with. We have a program that says, hey, for the new engineering center, we have you know, 250,000 square feet that we have to get into that building. And rather than doing it one room at a time and kind of adding them all up, we tend to sort of look at the overall envelope of what we can create, you know, how we want it to be oriented, what we want the shape to be, sort of play around with it at that level. And then after we sort of figure out what'll fit the side and be an overall appropriate shape relative to the context, then we'll start subdividing it into specific pieces. So that's the kind of workflow we're going to look at right now. It's really starting by defining envelopes and then sort of moving in from that to actually define building elements. Okay? So to do that, there's a whole suite of tools that are all about conceptual modeling. And within Revit, there's this thing that's called the conceptual modeling environment. Let me pop back a slide, see if I can still find that one. Hang on. Within the Revit environment, there's conceptual modeling, and we'll find it under the application menu where we go through and we create something called a conceptual mass. There's another tool we're going to actually be playing around with on Thursday, playing around with on Thursday called Vasari, which is also about conceptual modeling, but it goes one step further because it'll let us take our conceptual models and start doing environmental analysis on them. So we can start saying, given this shape and this location, what sort of energy use is it going to have? What sort of solar radiation is hitting it? that we can use or need to shield ourselves from, sort of what is the effect of it in the environment relative to wind and the, the currents that are created around it and stuff like that. But it all starts with conceptual modeling. We'll do it in Revit today. Same basic thing is going to translate into Vasari. Vasari is really just sort of Revit, a lightweight version that's really focused on conceptual modeling married to some analysis tools okay, in one package. But today we're going to be focusing in Revit. So let's go ahead and start there. So I'm going to start by going over to Revit and choosing a new conceptual mass. And if you will do the same thing with me, just choose under the application men menu, new, and choose conceptual mass. Okay, we're going to get another environment which is so, so close to Revit, but a little bit different. In fact, what this is going to be most like is what we were doing the other day, which was when we were creating the in-place components where we define everything in terms of sweeps and blends and extrusions. So choose mass. And if you are successful, you will be looking at something that looks like this. Okay, So looks sort of like the Revit environment, a little bit different. Has some levels, has some 3D views, has some elevation views, has a gray background, and also has some tools up in here for creating forms, both solid forms and void forms. Okay, so let's start there. In terms of, do most people have that open? You looking at that? Okay, if you're looking at that, we are ready to go. This is going to be all about really starting to create different forms, only rather than looking at little desks and tabletops, we're going to be looking at big blocks that are going to represent some buildings. And we'll start with some very simple shapes, kind of rectangularish shapes, and start deforming them. But we'll get into things that are a little more complicated than that. Okay, so to get going with this, Are you there? Okay. It's all going to be about this notion of creating different conceptual masses. And as we create them, and the different forms we're going to work with, all the notions of the different types of masses we can create with, with this tool um, happen explicitly, or implicitly, excuse me, as opposed to sort of seeing a separate blend tool, prof uh, extrusion tool, or evolve tool. Based on what you feed to the environment, okay, we can create different types of shapes. For example, if we have a single profile and we say make a form, it'll make an extrusion out of it, because that's about the only thing you can figure out what to do. Okay, if we have two different profiles, it'll try to blend those two different profiles together if it can. If you have a profile, spelled wrong, and an axis, you can revolve them around the axis. Okay, if you have two different pro a profile and a path, it'll sweep it. So it's going to be all the same stuff we did on Thursday, only as opposed to sort of explicitly saying sweep or blend, it's going to happen based on what we choose. So let's, geez, profiles. Hmm. 
someone needs a spelling checker, <laughs> might be me. Okay, let's go ahead and start up here with some uh, like basic tools, and we'll start with the notion of like, oh, let's just create kind of a simple rectangle. I'm going to be placing this rectangle since I am in 3D. I need to sort of be very explicit about where I'm placing it. I'm going to place it on level one. Okay, that'll put it down on the first floor level. Let me choose that. I'm going to be drawing on the work plane. Let me just sort of create a nice rectangle. Has some size. Don't worry about the size too much right now. Okay, I have a profile which is down on the plane. I can choose that profile. And when I choose that profile, I can say, let's create a form out of it. And if you do, you get something that looks like this. Now, this might look very familiar to some people if you work with SketchUp or some tools that are all about sort of drawing profiles and creating forms out of them. It sort of uses a very similar notion. Let's see if you can get yourself a basic rectangle going there. Again, I'll do another one just so we sort of have another example. I'll put a rectangle over here. I will choose it. I'll say make a form out of it. And there it is. Now, what can you do with this form, you might ask? And let's zoom on in and take a look. If you choose on the form any surface, you'll get these deforming arrows. I could pull things in the blue axis, the green axis, or the red axis. Let me go ahead and pull things in the blue axis. You'll see there's a temporary dimension here of 30 feet. I can type in a dimension if I want that box to be, for example, 50 feet tall. I can type that. Or I can just pull it in the blue axis. It'll report the dimension. Okay, I'm creating a shape that's about 70 feet tall right now, about seven stories tall. I could also go through and do something like this. Maybe I'll pull on the side and pull it out this way. Or take this edge and pull it that way. Okay. So I can create sort of very basic shapes and just start deforming them, again, either by pulling or by choosing a surface and entering a value here. I want that to be 90. Okay, Go ahead and see if you get a handle on that. Now, pushing and pulling on the face is kind of a lot of fun, but again, we're sort of sticking with fairly rectangular -y shapes that way. If you would like to have a little more flexibility and fluidity, you can actually pull on, push and pull on some other parts too. For example, if you want to, you can grab an edge and push and pull on it and start to create things that look a little more interesting. Okay, or if I take that same edge and I pull it out over here, that's yeah, starting to get a little interesting. Okay, now. What we're doing is we're actually starting to create shapes that are a little bit different than what you can easily create in Revit or a lot of the modeling tools. This surface up here, that's still one that's vertical. That's an easy one to create. We can create that in Revit just using the standard tools, a nice vertical surface. That's all fine. This front edge here, which is actually sloping forward, that's an example of a surface that isn't so easy to create using the standard tools because the standard tools always want to work vertically and work perpendicular to surfaces. So this is an example of we could actually use a form to kind of create a shape, and then we can start mapping that into building surfaces. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that in just a few minutes. But one of the big uses of conceptual massing is one is just to sort of explore and understand the overall shape and the volume of the form and understand about its shadows and some high level things about just really how well that shape performs. But another very useful uh, use of uh, uh, conceptual massing is to create all sorts of shapes and forms that you can't create other ways. We can create all sorts of compound curvatures and deformations that aren't so easy to get. So, just to sort of push that point to really sort of understand or see where you can do that. For example, if you grab, for example, that point, I can start pulling out on that and pushing it up. And I'm not sure if you have a very good sense of what's going on in 3D now, but that's actually quite a compound surface now. It has a lot of curvature going on in two different directions to it. So doing these sorts of deformations is really uh, yeah, powerful in terms of what you can actually go through and model. So 
we can go through and model and twist and for <coughs> deform and contort and sort of play with different shapes very easily in this environment. Okay. Let me kind of show you a couple other sort of basic forms you can create. And then we're going to talk about how you can sort of add some dimensions to control those forms pretty easily. But at this point, we're just sort of playing with different shapes. Okay, trying to find a shape that you like. So that's actually a pretty compound one. We'd have a hard time modeling in some other way. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that one just so I can clear out some space for myself. Say goodbye. Okay, let's talk about another shape. Another common thing we want to do sometimes is do a revolve. So let's talk about how you might do a revolve or a blend or something like that using these same sort of tools. So single profile extrusion. Okay. Revolve, what do we need? We need a profile and we need an axis to revolve it around. So let's talk about what that might look like. Okay. This is going to get to the whole issue of planes and where we're drawing our planes. Because by default, we're drawing down on level one. That's the work plane. If I want to have a revolve going vertically, I need to sort of reset it to be a vertical plane instead. So how can I do that? There's this great tool over here. Let me first just say show the work plane. That'll just highlight for you. That's where the work plane is. It's nice to remember where the work plane is. We're drawing on the surface right now. If I want to set it to be a different work plane, I can set and I can choose where I want the placement plane to be. I can choose, oh, the reference plane, which is the center line from front to back. That's this one. Or I can choose the center line from left to right. That's this one. But I can change that. Or I can even draw a new reference plane if I have some other angle I want to uh, use as my uh, drawing surface. I'll just choose the front to back one. Okay, and you'll see now I have that as the surface. So anything I draw is going to be on that vertical plane instead. Yes? No? Nope? Good. Okay. What can we draw? Let me go through and, oh, I'll draw sort of a profile. That I'm drawing as a model line. For the other, the axis line, I'm going to use a reference line because it's not really a piece of geometry. It's just sort of a, a reference point that I want to uh, use to sort of hang the geometry off of. Let me choose an axis right here. OK, and if I revolve those things, you get a sense of what's going to happen? It's going to create like a donut. So I can choose that. I come over here, and I want to control click to get that. So I got those two. And now I can say create a form. And it'll create the donut for me. So go ahead and see if you get yourself a basic little revolution. Again, what you need is just some sort of profile in a plane and some axis drawn in the same plane. And then you can go through and just revolve those things around each other. OK, so it can be very elaborate if you want to. Sure, I'll do it even with a new one. I'll say, first I'm going to draw a profile. That's kind of an ugly looking profile, but it'll work. Okay. Then I'm going to choose a reference line and draw an axis. So the final step is just grab the profile, control click to get the axis. So you've got to get them both. And then I can say create form. And it'll try to make sense out of that. Now as you're doing conceptual masses, you can go through and make masses out of several pieces. If I want sort of the big donut shaped thing and it has the little rectangular auditorium next to it, you can make several little pieces like that. You can sort of make as many different little pieces as you want to. And you can make sort of solid pieces and void pieces. So for example, if I want to cut out part of the donut there, I can, for example, say, OK, no worries. Let me set my work plane down to the base again. I'm going to set the work plane down to the reference plane, <laughs> level one. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go through and draw a circle down on the base, like that. For this form, I'm going to say, oh, let me create a void form out of it. OK, and see what I just did? I sort of carved away a piece of it. So 
When you're working with mass modeling, it's all about adding and subtracting, sort of adding and carving. It's kind of like working with big clay surfaces or something like that. But you can go through and create these sort of interesting shapes. And really, you have an awful lot of flexibility in terms of doing whatever you want. So that's a starting point, just in terms of being able to add and subtract and kind of create these different shapes. But you know, so, so far, so good? OK. There's a lot to play around with and explore there. So I'll just say, go ahead and try creating different shapes, adding and subtracting, and see if you can come up with some interesting things. Now, the next thing we want to show you about this is, as much fun as it is to go through and create and carve out these different shapes, it'd be a lot more interesting and powerful if we had the ability to control those shapes using parameters. So sort of like we like to reshape everything else using parameters. So let's talk about how you can do that. Because these different little shapes are quite deformable too. Let me zoom in on my little rectangular box. That'll be easier to start with. Okay. If you don't have a little rectangular box, why don't you choose draw a little rectangular box for yourself so that uh, you have an easy one to work with too. Because you know, if your shape is too awfully exotic, it's a little hard to do this as a starting point. So we'll learn to walk first, and then we'll run. So get your little rectangular box hanging out there. Okay. And if you got your little rectangular box, zoom on in on it. Let's try something. If, for example, I want to control the distance from this plane over here to that plane over there, what I can do is click on the plane, and you'll notice the temporary dimension appears. Now, the temporary dimension is a great thing to kind of have showing temporarily. We can go ahead and type a new value in there. But if I would like to go ahead and make that a parameter, something that will drive the geometry, what you're going to do is you're going to take that temporary dimension and make it permanent. And then we'll give it a name that will let us drive it. So how we can do that is if you click right on this little control, It'll put a dimension there. And now, if we choose that dimension, okay, we can actually add something called a label to it. And that'll be a parameter. That'll be something that can drive that dimension. So let me go ahead and call this the, uh, oh, I'm going to call this the building depth. That's just a name. We get to group it somewhere. And I'm going to put it under O oh, dimensions. In terms of in the uh, properties palette, you get to choose where you like it to show up. In dimensions is as good as place as any. Instance versus type, let's talk about that. If it's a type parameter, then all the different instances you place of the same type will have the same depth to them. If it's an instance parameter, I could place a whole bunch of these little blocks. And for every individual instance, I could change their depths independently. Okay, I'm going to make it an instance parameter because it's going to give me more flexibility in terms of playing with it. Okay, but you can sort of choose which way you'd like that. Let me choose instance. Got it. I'll say OK. And now you'll see it says building depth is 56. Okay, what is that bias, you might ask? And what it buys us is this. Okay, in the little type parameters, family types. You'll see there's a building depth dimension available to us now. And if you go through and type in a value there like 40 and say it apply it, or type in 100 and say apply it, what's going on is you should be flexing. You should be flexing and changing and stretching that. Let's go ahead and give that a try. See if you can get yours to flex a little bit. Now, the reason we like to add the parameters is as we're exploring different shapes of buildings, often we sort of know about the shape, but we're not quite 100% certain about how big it can be relative to the side or relative to how much volume we're creating. Giving ourselves the parameters then gives us the ability to kind of really quickly change and distort and try different shapes you know, without having to kind of recreate them all from scratch so that we can sort of test different uh, combinations and really see if we can zero in on the shape and the size that's exactly the one that we need. So that's what the parameters are all about. Let's say we want to add a few more parameters to this building. For example, let's say you wanted to sort of go through and change the height of the building relatively easily. How would you do that? It'd be very, very similar. 
You go ahead and choose that top surface. Notice it's about 20 feet tall right now. Again, what I'm going to do is ch click on this control to make it a permanent dimension. And then I'll choose the dimension, and I add a label to it. I'll call it like the building height. I'll also make it an instance, instance parameter. Okay, And once again now, since I have that parameter available to us, okay, we have the ability to start changing the whole thing around parametrically. So I can say types. It looks like I didn't do a very good job of categorizing that. Let me choose it, and I'll modify it, put it under dimensions. That's just going to sort of put it up in the same part of the dialog, so I can find it easily. So now I can change that to 40 feet tall, or 50 feet tall, whatever I want to in there. Okay. We can really just have you know, incredible control and flexibility in terms of messing around with these different shapes and controlling them parametrically. Let me zoom out of there. Same sort of thing happens over here, even for this shape. Let's see if I can come up with that profile. It's a little hard to get on that one. Let me do another shape that's a little bit easier to sort of see it with. I'm going to get rid of that one. Let's see if I can get rid of this. No. Nope. I keep trying, and it doesn't want to get rid of it for me. What do I want to do? I'll think about why that is in just a second. You're there. Cut it, paste it, align it. Don't know. Let's do another one that's just a little bit different. Okay, We will uh, set the work plane again to be that one. I'm going to draw a little uh, circular shape up here. I'll rotate that around. Okay. So for this shape, in the same sense, if I can choose that shape, see if I can get to it. Right there. It took a little tabbing to get to it, but I have the radius. I can choose that, make it permanent, and now I can add a parameter to that. Choosing the dimension, adding a label to it. I'll call it the donut radius. Okay. So within here, types. No, I didn't do a good job of grouping it again. Oh, let me actually find where it is. Did I do a bad job and actually put it as a type parameter? I think I might have done that. Actually, it doesn't look like I accepted it. Donut radius, dimensions, instance. OK, now it's in there type properties. <coughs> so if I go through and change it to a five foot radius, I'll get a little skinny donut. If I change that to a 30 foot radius, I should get a fat donut. Actually, in this case, it's not going to let me form it. The reason is, the, given the radius of where that curvature is, that would actually create a shape that would overlap on itself. So I'd have to kind of redefine that a little bit differently. Let me come back to uh, 21 feet. So it'll only let us sort of play with uh, parameters up to the point where it can still form a valid geometry. OK, now, we've been going ahead and let's see if I can bring this back. Adding parameters to control the shape. So we place dimensions. We can select a dimension and add a label to it. And then we can just go through and uh, try changing that geometry around. And that's really a very kind of cool way to get started with what's going on with the shape. Okay. 
But now let's go ahead and put that to use because just creating these shapes and deforming the shapes is really only half the message. That from an architectural standpoint is giving us the ability to start experimenting and playing. But let's now start using the information in the model to uh, kind of figure out and evaluate whether those shapes are really good shapes for what we need to do.